The voice of the drum calls. It sings a song of those who came before us and those to come. A song of survival and strength. A song of participation and voice. A song that calls us together. When we come together and participate in the 2010 census, we use this tool as the voice of all our native people. Our voice, it is in our hands. 2010 census. Welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this Tuesday, April 13th. I'm your host for today's program, Paul Domain. Many of the stories read here can also be found at our website at IndianCountryNews.com. Here are the news stories for the day from the Associated Press and other Native news sources. The Big Apple of the 14th century is back in action with the imminent reopening of the Jones Archaeological Museum at Moundville Archaeological Park. Visitor, visitors will see the results of the 10-year, $5 million renovation at the museum's official opening on May 15th. The newly renovated Museum tells the story of one of the most significant Native American archaeological sites in the U.S. through modern technology and celebrated artifacts. The museum's setup is the result of two years of collaboration between archaeologists, artists, and Native American scholars. The renovated museum has been divided into three separate uh, exhibit areas. The museum's first exhibit, Realm of the Sacred Rulers, opens the museum's Moundville storyline. The second the second exhibit, Joining of the Worlds, continues the story with the chief of Moundville and his wife pictured with their son in the Moundville maker of medicine awaiting the incoming tribe. The third exhibit, a Portal to the Starry Sky, features a Native American medicine man who is played by a Native American actor in a three-dimensional presentation through a film process called Pepper Ghost. The Ho-Chunk Nation of Wisconsin will be withdrawing from the bison and organic beef producing industries currently under tribal management. The nation says its operations at the Muscota Bison Ranch and organic belted Galloway Ranch in Toma, Wisconsin will cease by July 2010. The current economic climate and the discontinuous and fractured nature of the existing Ho-Chunk land bases are the chief factors behind the decision. Executive Director of the Heritage Preservation uh, program Henning Garvin said uh, Garvin said that in closing the operations the humane treatment of the animals on both properties will be of uh, primary concern to the nation. The Ho Chunk Nation will remain a member of the Intertribal Bison Cooperative in order to continue support of their mission to restore bison to Native American lands and to leave open the option to establish a self-sustaining and profitable herd should the economic situation and land status change in the future. One person suffered burns to his arms and legs in a fire at a treatment center serving the Oglala Sioux tribe. The fire at the Sioux Sands Hospital's Hope Lodge broke out this last Saturday. Fire officials say 10 patients and one instructor were inside at the time. The blaze moved quickly through the century-old building, one of the oldest on the hospital grounds. It houses a treatment program for substance abuse. Fire officials say one patient tried to retrieve his belongings from the building and suffered minor burns to his arm and legs. The Hope Lodge was destroyed and the cause of the fire is under investigation. Environmentalists in a northern Arizona tribe are asking a judge to halt the mining operation north of the Grand Canyon. Canadian mining firm Denison Mines Corporation operates the Arizona mine that's located on the U.S. Bureau of Land Management land. It's the first active mine in the area known as the Arizona Strip in some 20 years. Three environmental groups sued the BLM late last year, alleging a mine plan and environmental analysis analysis are outdated. The group along with the Kaabab Kaabab tribe of Paiute uh, filed a motion this week for a preliminary injunction to stop the mining operation until the lawsuit is heard. They claim mining impacts the Grand Canyon, impedes access to cultural and religious sites, and introduces radioactive materials into the environment. Two Michigan-based tribes will receive more than $62,000 in federal stimulus funds to provide food assistance to low-income families on or near reservations. The food distribution program on Indian reservations 
Reservations program will provide $53,000 to the Keweenaw Bay Indian Community and $9,455 to the Little River Band of Ottawa. The U.S. Department of Agriculture says the distribution program has received a total of more than $4.5 million in stimulus funds to buy equipment and improve facilities. It says the food distribution program is designed to enhance access to safe and nutritious food on reservations and tribal lands. Almost 90,000 low-income individuals nationwide receive a monthly food package through the distribution program. A trial is set to begin in Rapid City, South Dakota for the man accused of providing a gun that was used more than 34 years ago to kill an American Indian movement activist who has become an icon for many of North America's native people. Richard Dick Marshall has pled not guilty to aiding and abetting the December 1975 shooting death of fellow AIM activist Anna May Pictuaquash, who came to the Pine Ridge Reservation from Canada in the early 1970s to join the movement's efforts. Prosecutors have said Marshall at some point provided a 32 caliber revolver allegedly used by another former AIM member, John Graham, who is accused of shooting Aquash in the Badlands as she begged for her life. Graham and fellow activist Arlo Looking Cloud were indicted in the case in the year 2003. Looking Cloud was convicted in 2004 of being an accomplice to Aquash's murder and sentenced to life in prison. He's expected to be a key witness in Marshall's federal trial. Graham has pled not guilty to kidnapping, murder, and rape and could go on trial this summer. Prosecutors have said that the Marshall supplied the revolver when Graham, Looking Cloud, and Theta Nelson Clark stopped at Marshall's house near Allen the morning Aquash was killed. Witnesses testified at Looking Cloud's trial that the trio had driven Aquash from Denver, Colorado to Rapid City, South Dakota in an interrogation and eventually to the Badlands on orders from AIM leaders who ordered her killed because they thought she was a government informant. Federal investigators have denied Aquash was a snitch. Marshall's lawyer Dana Hanna has taken issue with Looking Cloud's previous statements and has tried in court documents to pick away at the credibility of Looking Cloud and other government witnesses. And in a related event, Theta Nelson Clark, long considered a key witness in the 1975 murder of American Indian Movement activist Anime Pictou Aquash, has been ruled competent to testify in the trial of Richard Marshall. Marshall, 58, is one of several people charged now with the death of Aquash, whose body was found on the Pine Ridge Reservation in February of 1976. Clark's name came up repeatedly during the 2004 trial of Arlo Looking Cloud, who was also charged in the murder, but Clark has never been charged. She has been called as a witness, however. Her attorneys maintain that Clark, who is now in her 80s and lives in Nebraska nursing home, has medical and age-related problems that make it impossible for her to serve as a witness. But after a brief question and answer session on April 13th before Judge Pearsall, Clark was ruled fit to testify. Amongst witnesses who are expected to testify uh, is the 1975 chairman of the American Indian Movement, John Trudell, the former wife of AIM co-founder Dennis Banks, that's Kamuk Nichols Ekafi now, former AIM member Richard Tuolk, and one of the world's best known wildlife photographers and author of eight books with some major interviews with AIM leaders, Cyril Chapman. Jury selection in Marshall's trial is scheduled to begin uh, on April 14th. And that is the latest roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. We want to thank you for joining with us. Join with us again soon. Miigwech.